All right, I wanna take this minute and I wanna say that having a goal that has a bigger reason versus falling off track will always take care of your motivation when you don't feel like doing the things that you know you should. Because eating that piece of cake or having that slice of pizza is, isn't a part of your bigger plan. Now, there's no reason why we can't fit it into your plan, but we're gonna be able to help you and stay focused and stay motivated during the tough times so that the tough times become regular times. Now, the number one thing that I need to tell you is that workouts are non-negotiable. It doesn't matter what the price is. The more that you need somebody in your corner, the more that you should be willing to pay to keep yourself motivated and on track. There's a lot of things that I'm not great at. I personally hire tennis coaches. I just started playing tennis about two and a half, maybe three years ago, and there's still a lot of elements that I wanna work on, and as such, I pay the high ticket to go and hire these coaches, and when I do, I see the improvements. These are things that I know I wouldn't be able to do myself. They're seeing things that I personally wouldn't point out myself, and as such, I have to pay that high ticket. And so for me, that's a non-negotiable. When it comes to you and your workouts, it's gotta be the same. It's gotta be a non-negotiable. Now, when it comes to managing your stress and then also staying on track, you gotta have a morning and a nighttime routine. A lot of people just wake up and they go to the washroom and they jump on their phone and they're scrolling through social media, they're answering their chats, they're answering their texts, some of us are answering our emails, and what ends up happening is you have no control over that, right? Like I wake up first thing in the morning and I've got 10 emails, I've got two text messages, and I've got 29 Facebook messengers with seven inboxes in my Instagram. Each one of those are a different conversation. Each one of those can create a different type of emotion. And all each one of those conversations could create a certain type of urgency. So if you have a morning routine that overcomes all of that, meaning your morning routine comes first, then the fires come second. Because unless you're actually on fire, none of those things need to get answered. And so as soon as you start your day in chaos, guess what? The rest of your day is gonna be chaos and you're gonna fall off track and you're gonna lose motivation and you're not gonna to wanna to go to the gym. So having a morning routine where you have like five or six set things that you, make, that you make sure that you get done, whether that means meal prepping your food, planning your food for the day, making your workouts, doing your ab routine first thing in the morning, drinking a liter of water first thing in the morning, that could be your morning routine right there. Nothing happens before your morning routine. And I also want you to have the same thing at night. Have a similar routine before you go to bed. This way your body gets used to shutting down because you need to make sleep a priority. I know we don't think we need sleep, but let me ask you this, how many cups of coffee are you drinking in a day? So if you're only getting four to five hours of sleep and you're drinking four to five cups of coffee and you're like, well, coffee does nothing to me. Well, guess what? That's not a good thing, okay? What coffee is, it basically blocks receptors in your brain from allowing your brain to naturally allow sleep receptors so that you can eventually shut down. Now, coffee goes in there and it overrides these receptors and it says, no, they, they, we're not gonna utilize this sleep receptor. We're actually gonna make you awake. But what ends up happening is this one's covered. Next thing you know, another one covers because that sleep still needs to bind to something. And so now you start producing more and more of these sleep receptors, which then creates more of a dependency on coffee. Whereas if you actually took the time to sleep, where you're not on your phone to the very last minute before you go to bed, and then you're you know, maybe getting up way too early to do nothing, then I would tell you that sleep needs to become a priority. Another tip that I would tell you is that you need to surround yourself with positive, uplifting people. And we have to be aware of the people that trigger these negative responses. And it's unfortunate that some of these people might be your best of friends or family members. And I'm not saying that you need to completely disassociate with, themself, with those people, but you need to limit their connectivity with you because if you're not fully grounded, if this is a topic of area that, that affects you, then it's going to affect the rest of your life, the way that you speak to your spouse, the way that you act around your children, the way that you are at work, and then also your workout commitment. Because if they are people that are energy suckers and they're sucking your energy and they're bringing you down to their level, whatever crab in the bucket they wanna be, then guess what? It doesn't matter who that person is it's not helping your life. And I know that we wanna be there for everybody. We wanna try and be a lifesaver and we think that we can help change the world. But I'm telling you this, the person that you can change is you. 
The people that can bring you down are them. The people that allow them to bring you down is you. So I would start to say that surround yourself with like-minded people that are uplifting and that want to see you scale to that next level. So there we have it. Number one, you need to make sure that your workouts are non-negotiable, okay? They come first before anything, okay? They're part of your morning routine or your nighttime routine, but no matter what happens in your day, you make them happen, okay? Have a morning routine so that you're not distracted by all those messages and you're not being brought into a spiral that eventually brings you down into your entire day, making you miss a workout. And no matter what, even if the project is huge and it's due tomorrow, maybe tomorrow you get up earlier, but tonight you go to bed early, okay? You keep a consistent bedtime, you get adequate amount of rest, you allow yourself to refresh. And throughout the day, if you're actually trying to get some sleep, then you need to limit your caffeine, your coffee intake, okay? You may think that it's helping you, but it's not because the coffee is actually making the problem worse, it's gonna make your sleep worse, and it's gonna actually give you less energy over time because you know coffee doesn't affect you anymore. That's not a good thing. And then the last but not least is that you need to surround yourself with uplifting people. Now here's the thing, right? Those people might be the closest people to you. But here's another thing. The person that's bringing everybody down might be you. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's you, so don't get offended. But in certain situations, if there's a ton of problems happening around you and you're the center of it, maybe it's time to turn those thumbs around and figure out what the hell am I doing that's creating this type of situation. So I hope that you take these to heart and I hope that these keep you motivated because this life, this fit life, this is a journey. This is a marathon. This isn't a sprint. And I want to see you do this forever.